All right, I did a, a video previously on this amplifier. A lot of people uh, were interested in it. I pointed out the transmission line was probably a funny impedance and stuff. Um, and um, anyway, a lot of people guessed what was wrong. A lot of people thought there was a crack capacitor. I don't know what you were seeing on the video, but it, there's no crack capacitor on this thing. And other people thought maybe other things were wrong and this and that. But uh, I had an epiphany what the problem might be. And nobody had pointed that out. So yeah, kudos to me. <laughs> and that is, uh, what was the symptoms of this thing not working? Well, it had no current draw. That, that's why it was dead. There's no current draw. Well, uh, why wouldn't there be current draw? Well, uh, the part's fried. That's what I figured. But it dawned on me that, well, maybe there's not an electrical path. And I had checked the VCC coming in, make sure the inductor was right as an inductor in series and made sure all that thing was every, everything. It didn't even dawn on me that the ground might be bad. And the reason that I didn't really think about it is the ground, there's eight pins on this device. There are no grounds on those eight pins. There's no ground. You, well, we said, well, that's, that can't be true. <laughs> so uh, here is the, uh, here is the uh, part. And here's one through three, four, five, and there's no, no ground. That's because the package base is the ground. And what does it mean, the package base? Well, the package has this little bit of clear metal on the bottom that is normally just a heat sink, uh, a, a thermal contact for the heat sink. But in this particular IC, not only is, is it the thermal contact, it's also the electrical contact for ground. Um, and so, I thought, well, maybe mine's not connected. And so on the, uh, if you remove this board on the back, uh, you can see right in the center of the part, there's this big V hole. And I'm assuming that it should be filled with solder <laughs> and there's just a hole there. And so what I did was I put uh, five volts on the part and then used my probe to short out the uh, package ground and the via, and sure enough, it started to conduct electricity. So all I had to do was fill up the hole with solder and poof, the part now works. All right, now that I have a uh, part, we can put it in the VNA and measure S21. And uh, I'm sweeping between 300 kilohertz and 1.3 megahertz. Um, and let me put five volts on the part. And poof, I get a trace. So uh, you guys probably can't see that now, but there we go. We have this beautiful trace. Now the part is designed is, is uh, said to be working from four meg 400 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz. So let's change the uh, start frequency to 400 megahertz. And there we go. So that's, it'll operate even farther than this analyzer will. But you can see um, a couple things here. First of all, uh, the, the gain of this device is supposed to be 12 dB. And if we put a marker over here at the farthest point, we're at about 11 dB, 10.7. Um, and down over here, it's, it's only about 3 dB. So there's definitely some real losses here at low frequencies. Um, I don't know how this board was designed. The board might actually only work at 2.4 gigahertz, right? I don't know how it was designed. If it was designed for broadband, it was designed for only one frequency. I don't know. What I do know is these wigglies are a dead giveaway of an impedance mismatch. Usually when you see something like that, it means that there's an impedance mismatch. It's hard to say. But anyway, if we just say, I don't know, let's say, let's change the frequency to uh, uh, start to one, one gigahertz to 1.3 gigahertz. It's starting to look kind of like an amplifier now, right? And our uh, marker, uh, we have anywhere from six and a half dB to to ten and a half dB, right? So that's kind of being an amplifier, and um, it's probably fine. Um, now, 
one of the things that we could test here is the uh, input S11. And the input S11 will take a look at how, how well it's matched to 50 ohms. So if we go here to measurement one and we go to reflection, that is the Smith chart. And it ain't 50 ohms <laughs> by any stretch, such as the imagination here. Um, we're looking at, uh, let's see here, marker. Let's come down over here somewhere. Uh, down here at one megahertz, it's measuring what, 100, 200 ohms? Yeah, where is it? 50 ohms. Yeah, it's never, yeah, 50 ohms here measurement. So there is a 50 ohm curve. You see here, this, there's a 50 ohm, 50 ohm line here. Um, but it's just all, it's just all wacky. It should be there in the center. Anyway, there's a good proof that the impedance is totally mismatched on this thing. And that's probably why we're seeing these wigglies. Um, and uh, it's giving us some gain. Um, like I said, uh, the, um, I think I'll zoom down here a little bit. The, uh, the part has uh, input capacitors and output capacitors. It has some matching uh, capacitance as well here and there. So it's, it, it could be like, a, like I said, it could be designed at maybe 2.4 gigahertz and it's going to be operating great there. So let's, let's get out another, maybe another VNA and test it at a higher frequency. All right. I have a nano VNA hooked up. It's been calibrated. I have it sweeping from 400 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz, which is supposedly the usable range of this amplifier. The amplifier is on. And uh, I have a 30 dB pad in there. So actually 30 dB would be zero gain. So this is plus 10 and plus 20 dB gain. So we're getting about plus 20 dB gain at around 1.7 gigahertz. And then at 2.7, it's fall, fallen off to almost nothing. And then at 400 megahertz, it's fallen off to almost nothing. So uh, this particular board uh, is kind of optimized for this particular range, um, somewhere between, um, oh, I don't know. It's, it's operating fine somewhere between one gigahertz and let's say, uh, one gigahertz and 2.2 .2 gigahertz. Um, you know, it's, it's above 10 dB gain around 20 dB gain at night, probably around 19 or something. Let's move it up to the, to the peak up there. And yeah, right about, right about uh, 19 dB gain, right around in here. So anyway, there you go. It does work, um, not well. <laughs> the impedance is wrong. In fact, we can look at the impedance on this thing too, right? Uh, let's see here, back, back, display trace zero which is the, uh, let's turn this one off, which is S11. And then we can do a format Smith chart. Yeah, there you go. So again, not 50 ohms. <laughs> okay, well, a second look at this part. It is now working um, and uh, Raise your hand if you guessed that it was a missing, missing solder blob on the back. Um, but I didn't, I didn't read any comments that said that. So yeah, there you go.